Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can create Pinterest style galleries using the Pinterest image gallery widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. With this widget, you can create galleries reminiscent of Pinterest boards. Right now, we're on the widgets page where you can find some examples of its use. The galleries you create can be full width or boxed, and there's a wealth of options that will let you customize your gallery to match your site's design and requirements. So let's take a look at how this widget works. Head over to the back end, and in the Elementor sidebar, search for the Pinterest image gallery. There it is. Drag it over to the right. Don't worry, the fact that we can't see anything yet is completely normal. This is simply how the widget looks before we add any images to it. So our first step is to add some, and you can do that by clicking here. You can use images from your media library or upload new ones on the spot. It's up to you. I'm going to pick these 10. You can select multiple images at the same time, just hold down the shift key. OK, then create a new gallery and insert gallery. And this is how my Pinterest image gallery looks like by default. It has three columns and some space between the items. By default, it should be boxed or set in grid if you prefer. But mine right now is stretched out full width. That's because I had some settings already made before we started. I'll show you what those are after we go through the widgets options, since I need a ready gallery element to illustrate what those settings do. OK, so once we've added the images, we can take a look at the gallery settings section. And the first option we have in here is to enable the lightbox pop-up. It's set to yes by default, but you can switch it to no to disable it. When you click on an image, it serves to open it as an overlay in the same window. And in this view, visitors can go through the entire gallery. It's a useful option for a gallery to have, so I'll keep it on. Let me get back to the options now. Alright, next we have the number of columns. It's set to 3 by default, but you can change that number to anything from 1 to 8. I'll use 5. There we are. Following that, we have the columns responsive option. This is where we set how our gallery will display on different screen sizes. The default setting is predefined, and you can stick with it if you don't want to meddle with the settings yourself. But if you do want to make manual adjustments, you can switch to custom. With it, you can select the number of columns that will be shown on each screen size. And that's what I'm going to do now. For starters, you should know that we don't have an option for the largest screens, desktops, which tend to be 1920 pixels wide on average, as that's the default screen size, so it requires no particular responsiveness settings. So the first option here is for laptops. You can see the range of pixel widths that it covers, and you'd use this drop down to pick the number of columns you want to show. I'm going to stick with 5 because this is still a pretty large screen size. And I'll leave the same number of columns for the next width. Think of it as max screen width. I'm deliberately talking about devices instead of exact pixel numbers to give you a sense of the kind of screen width each option refers to. So for landscape orientation on tablets, I'm going to leave 3. And for portrait orientation on tablets, it'll be 2. But for both the landscape and the portrait orientation on mobile phones, it'll be one. Alright. Below this, we have the space between items option. As I move the slider, you can see that the amount of space changes. I want to eliminate any space between my items, so I'll set zero pixels for the value. Then we have the image hover option. The default setting is zoom in, and when I hover over an image, we can see it zooms in a bit. We can switch this to zoom out, which looks like this. Or we can set it to move. So it looks like this. And there's none, which disables all hover effects. For my gallery, I'll set zoom out, so it'll look like this. Since I picked one of the two zoom effects, I get to pick the image hover zoom origin. This option lets you choose which part of the image will be the zoom focal point. It's set to center by default, but there are quite a few options here that you can try to see which one fits your needs best. Now, we have two interesting options below this. We can set an overlay color. It comes with a standard color picker, so just select the color you like for the overlay, and then give it a degree of transparency to reveal the images under the color. Okay, 
let me reset this. And then we have the overlay hover color. The same principle applies, only now the color will be visible on hover. You'll need to set the degree of transparency again to keep the images visible. So depending on what you set, it could look something like this. Ok, that's it for the gallery settings options. Underneath them we have the developer tools. When we open them we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. This text you see. Then we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Ok, that's it. Now, before we finish up, there's something else I wanted to show you. In the general settings, where you've picked your images, if you want to, this is where you can change their order. All you need to do is drag and drop an image into its new position. And the images will be displayed on the front end from left to right in the order that you arrange them. I'm going to rearrange a few of mine now, so just give me a sec. Ok, there. Now insert gallery again. And here's my reshuffled image gallery. Now, if you recall, I mentioned that the gallery is boxed by default and that I had to make separate settings beforehand to make it full width. Let me show you what those are. The first thing that play the part is the page template I used. You can see and switch your page layout when you click here to open the settings. And the page layout option will show which template you're using as well as all the other templates you have available. The one I'm using is full width, as you can see from its name. A full width layout will let you create elements that will stretch to the full capacity of the available space. A box layout, or a layout that's in grid, will be limited to a set width. That's usually something between 1100 and 1300 pixels. Whichever layout you're using, you can still make adjustments to a particular section and make your gallery full width. You can find the settings you need here, when you click on this middle icon to edit the section. Now we can see that my content width is set to full width. The alternative is boxed, and it looks like this. Now my element is as wide as the grid set by the theme. If you'd like to fine tune the content width, you have this handy slider to help you. However, I want to keep my gallery as wide as possible, so I'll switch back to full width. The second option that's relevant for us here is the columns gap. I have it set to no gap, but let me show you what the default looks like. Now we can see there's some space around the element, a sort of section padding. Since it's preventing my element from stretching to the full width of the page, I'll switch this back to no gap. Ok, now, depending on your page layout, these two may have been enough to make your gallery full width. We can see that thanks to them and the full width page layout, my gallery is as wide as possible. But if you set these two options and your element is still boxed, then you need to activate a third option as well. And that's this one, stretch section. Simply click on this switch to turn it on. And voila, your gallery should now be stretched full width across the screen. And that's all, I'll click on update to save my work. And we can take a last look at the widgets page. So, again, here are some of the examples of different things you can do with the Pinterest image gallery widget and the potential variations you can make using it. Here, for example, is the design I copied for this tutorial. Nevertheless, the options we covered will help you make a gallery like any of these here. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.